Hey YouTube, Freedom for Kaz here, and we are out here at Kaz vs. Wild 4. And as always, we do a lot of learning out here, a lot of teaching, and today I'm going to be teaching about how to make a homemade barbecue from using only things that are in the forest. So as you can see, I've got these two logs in my hand. These are actually uh, part of a tree trunk, and I used my machete to actually trim these off. Now what I didn't do, I did not use any live timber. What I did was is I went through and I found a freshly fallen tree, which is this one right here. And as you can see that this, that this is freshly fallen. This is some kind of hardwood I can tell by, by chopping it, it gave me a lot of resistance in going through it. And now my machete that I used, I know is not dull, but this is definitely a hardwood. You can also tell by the, by the skin. I'm gonna guess that it could be a young maple, which is probably a good guess. Um, and the wood on the inside actually looks really clean. Uh, from what I've chopped off, I can see that there's no mold, there's no mildew, there's no mushrooms or anything, no, no parasites inside the wood. So I know this is gonna be some good wood to use to make my homemade barbecue. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue chopping up these size blocks and this is actually what's going to be ending up my as my barbecue grill portion of the fire. As I continue on, I'm going to clean the bark off of these. And I'm going to chop up probably about four or five more. Then when I get to that point of the video, I'll show you the portion of meat that I'm going to be cooking with this survival barbecue and how I'm going to do it. So stay tuned. I'll finish making the barbecue. Hey guys, these are the branches that are going to make the grill part of my barbecue. So as you can see, I got a pretty good length there and width there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the bark off of these, clean these up. And I'm going to assemble my barbecue and I'm going to show you what we have before we start cooking. Hey guys, these are the sticks that's going to be my barbecue grill. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to shave off the, the bark here. I want to take a look at the wood here and see how it looks like. Um, I just want to show you how I do that just kind of scrape this off scrape off the bark I want to get down to the good part of the wood just want to make sure there's no bugs no termites no mold no mildew no uh, things like that um, so I'm not afraid to put what I'm cooking on this part of the grill and uh, all these pieces look really really good and you just kind of shave it off like that does take a little bit of work does take a little bit of time but uh, looks real good so far what I'm doing you know the wood looks very clean can't really complain about it I don't see any mold any mildew no termites nothing like that and essentially when you're done shaving the wood basically what you're gonna have is a piece like this that's all cleaned off it's gonna look really good I'm not afraid to put what I'm cooking on this. Um, this is a real nice clean piece of wood. So that looks good. And when I get to that point, I'll show you the rest of the grill. All right, guys. So this is my survival barbecue. And this is how it's going to look after it's set up. But this is the general layout of how it's going to be. And there are several reasons why I have it this way. But basically what I'm going to do is these are going to be the legs that are going to hold these side members. And then this is going to be the grill portion of my barbecue, which is how I explained earlier in the video. Um, and if you notice right away, I've got a narrow end and a wider end, and obviously that is for bigger pieces of meat and or things that you're gonna barbecue on here. Um, I have it set up that way. I really thought that'd be a great idea to actually have two different sizes, narrow and wide at the ends of the barbecue. I thought about that, and I thought that would be important uh, if I'm cooking certain types of meat or larger pieces of meat, that'd be great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a fire trough right in the middle here. I'm going to trench that out, and I'm going to show you how I do that when I get to that point. And what I also want to do is um, just want to show you that each stake has a point on the end of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive these into the ground. But before, but before I drive them into the ground, I'm going to dig a shallow hole, probably about three inches or so. And then just drive them into the ground just a little bit. Um, because the reason why is I don't want to end up breaking this Y. This Y is going to be very important. So I just want to drive it in the ground just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up, get everything going. And when I get down with that, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys. So I changed the camera angle a little bit so you can get a full perspective of what the barbecue looks like. 
here it is laid out you can see I got about a good 12 inches from the ground to the top of the grill here and underneath here I've got I've got some wood planks that are in the trough and that's what I'm gonna burn to uh, cook the food and I just want to reiterate that this is not going to be a high heat fire this is going to be a, a slow burning almost making jerky kind of a fire a very slow paced burn a very slow paced cook this isn't something that I'm going to want to get done and cooked in 15 20 minutes this is more based on food preservation and things like that so what would be great to cook on this would be larger pieces of meat that you stripped out in in the shape of jerky form whether it be chicken or beef uh, that would be great uh, venison would be awesome as well now if you're in a survival situation and you had to do wild animals like if you found a wild boar in the forest I mean you could possibly do that here as well um, you know there's all kinds of things that you could do but the key of this fire is slow roasting that's that's what the key of this fire is and to keep the fire at a slow roasting pace I've got these hardwood chunks here that I'm going to use and basically what I'm going to do is I, I, I break them down into smaller pieces again because I don't want to have a rip roaring flame I just want to have a slow roasting hot coal fire that's what I want and, and that's what we're going to do and I have a, a, a piece of meat that I'm going to demonstrate with you and how we're going to do that here today all right guys so here we have the barbecue just wanted to give you a distance view of what the fire looks like i got logs in there and obviously you can tell there's a whole bunch of hots in there and i got the uh the hardwood in there in small little chunks which is going to act like charcoal and uh, i got the beef on top i'm going to add some carrots shortly here too and um everything's going great everything's looking real good uh, just going to keep the fire really, really hot underneath and uh, really excited about how this is going to turn out. All right, YouTube, here's the barbecue and it is looking really good. We've got a small flame underneath and as you can see, the hots are really, really hot and there's a lot of heat coming up out of that thing. And uh, we threw some carrots on there as well. Thought, why not, you know? And if you notice uh, right here where I split the bigger carrots, that's so some heat can pass through. Same thing with this one here. So some heat can pass through and uh man this thing is just doing great just want to kind of focus on the fire again like i said we just got a very very small fire down there uh with more hot coals than anything and uh really excited about how this barbecue is turning out it's a slow roasting process and uh, the beef that we have there is cut into one inch by one inch chunks and again because this is a slow process we want to make sure that we're going to cook that meat all the way through and uh, get it to the right temperature that we'd like to have it at today so again this is a great way to have a great survival fire um, again if you're uh, out in the woods doing survival practicing survival or if you're in a, uh, a situation where uh, you need to actually harvest an animal um, here's a great way where you can just cut off long strips of meat like the back loins or maybe a hip roast or something like that just some long strips of meat and just make a barbecue like this and just do a slow roasting process where you can actually preserve that meat for a couple few days almost like making jerky in a way so uh, again this is just a great survival practice to get out there and actually do it and uh, like I said uh, I'm really excited about how this is turning out this is doing really really good and uh, when we are done cooking all this I will let you know and I'll show you the finished product Hey guys, just want to give you a top view of uh, what we're looking at here. I actually turned over the beef strips and uh, moved the carrots around a little bit. And man, it is sure cooking good, nice and slow, jerky style. And that's exactly what I was looking for. So this has been a successful survival barbecue. And I'm really excited. All right, guys, just want to give you a quick side view of what we're looking at here. And uh, as you can see, the trough is underneath the barbecue. And it's a long trough, not very wide much longer than it is wide so it's a narrow long trough and it's working perfect all right YouTube it's been about three hours now and uh, everything is done and man that beef sure looks good the carrots look great we had a wonderful time cooking this meal and as you can clearly see uh, it, it, it's it's done it, and the barbecue is still intact didn't have any major problems it was a very rigid survival barbecue and again, just want to give you a side view as to uh, 
what it looks like here again. We just got a nice trough with a lot of hots in there, a lot of hot coals. This was a low flame, high heat survival fire. And uh, again, you know, it's just fantastic. You can see the steam still coming off the food and uh, everything looks great, man. And we are ready to dig in. Here is one last look at uh, the meal before we eat it. And I uh, just want to encourage everybody to come out next year. Kaz vs. Wild 5. And these are the things that we do. We, church, we, we teach, train, and learn. And most of all, we build our friendships.